Good morning, everyone. Today is Friday, May 27th. This is a meeting of the policy committee um, to continue our policy review. Um, we will start on um, this asylum. Okay, so the first policy, 5225, drug and alcohol use by students. It just clarifies that um, student, it's the unlawful use of drugs that we're regulating here since some students have prescriptions covered and also under certain circumstances, students have the right to possess and administer the medications themselves. Um, and again, and you'll see this in the next policy as well, the law changed so that cannabis, possession or sale of cannabis cannot be treated any more harshly than alcohol. Any questions on this policy? Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sai, I'll let you keep going. <laughs> okay, but just, right. And so these changes are similar about cannabis and that um, the, I mean, that's just the same. I don't need to say anything else. <laughs> we have the memo on this. It's just yeah. an update in revision. Any questions? Search and seizure policy 5255, Mrs. Sayan. So these are some stylistic changes and legal citations suggested by Shipman, but it also explicitly now uh, says that the use of drug detection dogs, metal detectors, or similar devices has to be expressly authorized by the superintendent. So some of the wording in some of these policies is not law, but it's based on Shipman and Goodwin's experience that districts have had trouble with things in the past. Gotcha. So that's... And that would, was kind of our standard operating procedure anyway, but it's good to codify it at this point in case there's any concerns. Uh, policy 5265, confidentiality and access to education records. Right, so there have been so many changes as it says in the memo that um, Shipman and Goodwin actually recommended that we just repeal the old policy to avoid mistakes. Um, we're following all aspects of this policy, but the student data privacy law that was enacted in 2016 and then revised in 2018 is now incorporated here. Um, disclosure to the Department of Children and Families, the expungement of expulsion records, it's all been updated to comply with current law. Okay, are there any questions? Mrs. Best. Thank you. I was just curious if there's a provision anywhere else in our policies, and there probably is, for, for an individual to change their name. I saw a name change provision as part of a, a transgender or gender non-conforming student, conform, conforming student. Um, but it, how does that work if it's not related to that situation? So um, we don't have policies. I, we have been consulting with Shipman and Goodwin about the transgender um, issue, uh, but we don't have a policy. If it's related to, to something other than that, then the schools require legal documentation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. Yep. And we're required to keep records in the child's legal name, even if colloquially yes. they go choose to go by another name, you know, like any nickname, transgender or yeah. not, right? We, we have people who go by nicknames, but we keep our records and then keep them in accordance. I assume with a legal name change, all those triggers would apply and, and we would update our records. Yes. Okie dokie. Um, although, well, I think also what I would just point out is this is how we've been um, working in practice. Yes. And, and it's probably a good update because we've really updated our practice and had to make some decisions and now having the legal opinions in practice and in our policy. Right, and um, especially in the regulations, it yeah. makes it transparent yeah. about what's stored where and for how long. Yeah, yes. quite detailed. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> poor Shirley. Yes. <laughs> um, moving on, we'll go to 5325 student policy, uh, student so, privacy. Right, so it updates the definition of personally identifiable information and clarifies student surveys and the administration of student surveys to students, which again, Dr. Ali, I, we've discussed this, we comply with the law. Okay. Again, I think this has been current board practice. It's been discussed a lot at the board level um, and we're already acting in accordance in it. So it's good to have the policy updated. Yes. Any questions? I'm sorry. Okay, policy uh, 5270. This language just at more accurately re uh, reflects the statute and makes it clear that you know the pledge is voluntary. Any questions? 
really going through this fast today. I like this. Uh, policy 5235, conduct on school buses. Right. So when we updated the student discipline policy, all conduct on school buses was included there. So this policy is not necessary anymore. We should repeal it. Makes sense. Uh, policy 5025. Right. So this is a policy where the formatting is really crazy, but rest assured, I will, after the board adopts it, I will fix it before it goes on the uh, website. But this clarifies that students with diabetes um, also have a life-threatening um, situation along with food allergies and glycogen storage. Um, and so this is the language that I thought might um, present an issue, which is on the first page under um, paragraph I. Students with life-threatening food allergies and diabetes are virtually always students with disabilities and should be referred to a section 504 team. Again, that's Shipman and Goodwin dealing with problems in other districts. We always do that. So, but it's just a clarification. So Marge and I talked a lot about this language and, and why have this language and why not? And I think um, the answers in going back to our attorneys that um, it had been a common enough problem in other districts that some of these issues were not recognized as eligible as 504s. Mm -hmm. And it had come up repeatedly and kind of come to a level of legal understanding that we felt it important based on their recommendation to include this. This is our current practice, but if for some reason we fell out of practice, the board felt that it was important because this issue has, or our recommendation to the board is we feel it's important enough to recognize that um, these situations can really interrupt learning and so that we, these students are eligible and it's not really debatable that if they would like to proceed to the 504 process. Fair way of understanding? Claim yeah. yeah, this is best. When, when I, oh, sorry, Grant. Oh, thank you. So we're saying that the, the life-threatening food allergy and or diabetes is the disability, or we're saying that individuals with those conditions also all tend to normally have a disability? No, the, the factor is the life-threatening food allergy or the diabetes. Shipman okay. felt that oftentimes it had come to the level of legality of, are we recognizing that? Given that the intensity that it can take to manage that during the day, should parents want to go to the 504 process, we have allowed them to do that. We will continue to, but Shipman said in other districts, it had come up enough that it, they felt it was important to express um, that these are recognizable issues that can, if the parent elects, go to a 504 process. Okay. I'm no legalese expert, but it did not it, it didn't read to me that that clearly. It read to me more like people who have a life-threatening allergy or diabetes also tend to have disabilities. So that that wasn't as direct as I, I, I read it thought so. it might be. Actually, I had the I, yeah. So so the so I had the CM uh, sort of uh, thought process. So it, I think it might just. Well, we can ask them to clarify the language. This was their um, draft language, and we can ask them to clarify with the concern that this scene, this could be read to imply that there are additional underlying concerns other than the food allergy themselves. So that we'll come back with language. That sounds good. The, the point you're, that it's trying to make, I think, makes all the sense in the world, to yes. be clear. We're agreeing on the point. Yes. Okay, so it's a language clarification. Right. Okay. Because this is their model language, but I, we're happy to tailor it since it's not required legal language. But we're going to ask them so we don't end up in any legal hot water. Okay. Um, policy 5340, physical examinations and screenings. So our pol previous policy was really bare bones, and I'm, I apologize that it's not in the packet, but um, Alicia has reviewed this. This is Shipman's model policy, and it reflects the current state of law and our practice. Any questions? Uh, policy 5340, the administrative regulations regarding oh, health assessment screenings and oral health assessments. Wait, that's the one we just did. That's one we just did, sorry. Yes. Yep, it's okay. <laughs> nope, you're right. There's a lot today. Yes. Um, policy 5320, health services and requirements. So I spoke to both um, Alicia and Shipman and Goodwin, and you know, this is one of those nice supportive things, but we have a job description for nurses. We have expectation for nurses. So we, this is unnecessary. 
I mean, I would agree. This yeah. is an unnecessary policy. I would recommend to the board that we, we repeal this policy. Any questions? Policy 5330 health records. Again, um, Alicia is comfortable that we're, our practice is correct and Shipman and Goodwin feels like having a policy, you know, things may change. Is, is it an emergency card? Is it uploaded into a system? It's just, you know, it's more, this is more administrative in nature was the suggestion. Anyone else thoughts different? You're fine with the same recommendation? Okay, uh, we'll move on to the discussion and need for a civility policy. Um, Mrs. Siam provided us with model policies. Were there thoughts? So can, why we had one, why was it repealed? When, when we did the batch repeal, what was the conversation? So what we had was so old and so outdated when we, when we repealed all of those series because it was so outdated. One thing that bubbled back up to Marge was there were times when principals said, you know, occasionally we, we do refer to that policy. Um, and it's one of those things that I think we have to decide how actionable it is and the value of having it. Um, you know, sometimes when we can't act on a policy our feeling was it needs to go. However, principals said they actually at times were acting on this policy. And so I think that at the very least it needed a significant update from what we had. And so we kind of went out on a mission to say, okay, who in the area has a policy? What does that policy look like? It, how is it enacted? Um, and these were, were some of the ones that we came back with. Um, Marge, I feel like if I'm misinterpreting any of this, let me know. Or no, we, we did consult when we did the batch repeal. Mm -hmm. We did consult with Shipman and Goodwin about the civility policy. You know, they worry about free speech and interference. And, you know, you if you let people say positive things at me at board meetings, especially, you have to let them say some negative things. So um, a lot of the things that are included in the New Canaan and Western policy are already, you know, against the law. So damage to property and whatever. So, um, I don't know, there was a discussion about the mission, vision, and core values and whether that covers things. So, oh, this, sorry. 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 Go ahead. That's not going. Yeah, this is probably slightly different. I'm a big proponent of the core values and so on and so forth. Um, but that those relatively apply to the adults in the system. And in many cases, some of these things apply, when you start, differently apply to uh, the community or community members or, or people who aren't even part of our community. Because, for instance, we had a, a situation recently of an interaction with a community member who wasn't even part of our community um, and how they conducted themselves with a staff member at the high school. Um, and I would say, my guess is if a staff member read this or other staff members read this, they'd probably go, yeah, I wish I had that because like, even though the law is the law and we can act the law and someone was violating the law, but it may be a, a reassurance. So it's not just how board members behave or how people behave at board member at board meetings, but it's also around the district community. So that, I guess there's there's reason to consider from that perspective. If you're asking, is there a reason to even have it in some capacity? Uh, that other level of reassurance that these are just completely non non acceptable behaviors. Um, so I do think there are certain levers in place. Um, however, it would be nice to be explicit. Yes. Um, you know, I was one of those people who share the concern of like, look, if we take a good news at board meetings, we have to take bad news too. And we might not always like it, but it's important for us to hear it because then we hear how the community feels. Board chairs always have the right to close down a meeting if it gets, um, <coughs> but when you close that down, you close it down to all of the public. And that is a rarely exercised level. I mean, really, truly, quite frankly, rarely. I think in all my years, I've almost had to issue that warning only once. Um, so it would be, I, I actually think there is some merit to a civility um, policy in the sense of setting expectations um, of what we want. I think some of these are, you know, you're right. We, we could always file legal charges, but do we really want to go that far? Do we just want to be able to have a reminder that like, look, we will engage in hard conversations, tough conversations. And quite frankly, I'm less worried about it at the board level. I actually think we can get there at the board level. I'm more worried inside of schools 
making sure that that we really have saturated the idea that we expect civility to prevail. Mm -hmm. Differing ideas are fine, but, but civility prevails. So that's my arena that I'm a little more worried about people like right. and outside I think, the community I think, yeah. during the school day or to teachers. Um, and to Dr. Adley's point of having maybe a little gravitas, if you're having, you know, coming, going back to my days as a teacher, there was a teacher, parent teacher conference that got really heated and really uncomfortable. And if I had had something to say, hey, this is our policy, if you need to abide by this, and if you can't, we need to end this. So having that in your in a in a staff member's back pocket, I think provides a little um, support and 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 comfort. Um, I liked the model policy that came forward. Um, I mean, if you look at these different, I think we could take things from different policies, right? Like each of them had good points. I don't know that I would adopt one of them in whole. Um, I personally think we would leave out some of this stuff that that is legal, but I, I mean, this is a tough one and I, and I would be open to thoughts, but I really do think that there's a value of putting our stake in the ground at, at different levels. Um, you know, we have it at the legal level, but if, if someone is being verbally abusive, are we, are we pressing charges on them? Or are we saying, look, we have a policy that prohibits this kind of behavior. We need to find a different way to engage with one another. Um, anyone else? I just I agree that it's a fine line of, you know, how specific do we get? Um, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily have a problem with the model policy that's here. Well, these um, are these are policies from Weston and New Kingdom. No, I know. So the, I mean, yeah. I, would, I would think probably the best thing would be to ask the ask attorneys. The, yeah. Uh, I mean, because I don't need things like smoke or tobacco products. We yeah, just that, covered that like, yeah, policy. No, that's not really civility to me, right? If, if Shipman could provide us with something, I think in the spirit, at least of yeah. what Mrs. Parent or I'm saying, Mrs. Best, feel free to disagree or agree, of, of what we're really trying to do is maintain a level where ideas are exchanged freely and openly and respectfully, that would be great. If, if the subcommittee f feels uh, that, that we would we would take a, a draft policy to the board, perhaps we, administratively come back with maybe a proposal or something right. to this board before it goes back. Yeah, I think that's fine. That's, I like that. I think that makes sense. I, I think it, it, it's a little golden rule-ish, right? That's a little bit of what we're saying we need and we just, we want it to have a little more meat to it so that it is it is useful and um, a tool for people to have if they should need it. I'm fine with that. So let's ask Shimon for a draft. Um, see where it gets us. Um, I zoomed right over our update on policy committee topics, Mrs. Sion, because I zoomed in here so quickly. Um, you want to run through that? Do you want me to run through what I'd like to do this summer? I, I go for it. Okay. So I'm in, um, with the committee's indulgence, I would like to, and, and offering that we now have the Zoom option, telling you that we could Zoom. I'd like to try, if we can, to schedule a meeting or two this summer to continue on this process. Um, I think we've talked a lot about the opening of school. I think the board always has a lot of work at the opening of school, and I'm worried about finding falling behind in this process. So if committee members are open, um, if the administration is open, because I know it takes a lot of work, I'd like to keep this process going and even if that requires one or two meetings over the summer, which we typically break for the summer, we could try, you know, June or July, maybe, you know, you guys let me know and I, I'll circulate an email, but I'd like to try to keep this process going and push through. Um, we purposely picked up students because you see how long it's, it's taken just for this batch, but we have other batches as well. So would the committee be open to continuing this process with one or two meetings this summer as well? I would be, yes. Okay. I would and even if we come up with a significant number of recommendations for the, the board or just a significant number of policies, the board will know that we reviewed them. And when they next meet, we could bring them all forward. Okay. So I will, that, that is a quorum of the board, but I will check with Mr. Brown too. And I will do everything in my power to work with the availability, letting you guys know that we will get information to you. 
with as much lead time and you can zoom in if you're not around. I would just really like to keep this work going as much as possible. Mrs. Yeah. Bass. I, if, I, I would prefer if we could keep it to June and July, if at all possible, but I'm, I'm willing to make things work as we need to. I would too. <laughs> um, so I think that, you know, that will be the goal if we can. But, you know, e today we just went through all these policies and for Marge and I, that's a big step. And if we can, if we can keep this work going, then I think the board will know all policies have been re reviewed and updated um, as quickly as possible. All right, um, any public comment? There is no audience. <laughs> there is no audience. Um, well, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mrs. Parent, Mrs. Best, we are all in favor. Thank you, everybody.